Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Al, and the war within Alpha News as well as data mining is finally here. Which means that hopefully by some point tonight or tomorrow, we'll see a Battle.net update that includes a few Alpha invites. Yesterday we covered the main key points of the Alpha preview, where a ton of new content was made available for players to test early, from new dungeons, delves, quests and class changes, as well as some of the key systems of this expansion. And while we were able to cover a big portion of these updates, I did end up missing out on a few more that were revealed after I've already put together my video. With things like leveling becoming much easier with the launch of War Within, making the process of leveling new characters much more convenient. As well as big updates coming to the race of the Drakthir, as they're looking to get more playable classes in the near future. But also a new race besides the earthen is catching the community's spotlight which might suggest an addition of allied races at some point in the near future in today's video i wanted to go over these three exciting topics from the most recent alpha preview but right before that most of you guys watching these kind of updates are still not subscribed however the more of you remind the more of you do so let's keep it going subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway Especially if you want to get more regular content regarding Dragonflight Patch 1026, 1027, Season 4, or any of the future War Within updates. First of all, we got a big all friendly buff on the horizon as leveling is about to get much easier with the release of the War Within. Ever since the leveling revamps that took place during Shadowlands and Dragonflight, Blizzard has been focusing on making the leveling journey as quick and painless as possible. The main goal of this revamp was to make the leveling journey outside of the newer expansions a lot more expedited. For example, currently in Dragonflight, leveling a fresh character from level 1 to 60 is relatively quick, in order to get you playing Dragonflight content as soon as possible. In the War Within, they're gonna try to keep the same type of pacing, so that all of the content outside of the newest expansion isn't drastically too slow, since levels are about to be increased this time around. This expansion leveling will start from level 70 to 80, and that means the journey before it is going to be a little bit more streamlined. To help streamline that process, a new experience nerf is being introduced into the alpha, which helps cut back on the amount of experience you need in order to get into the war within content, where we see EXP reduction starting at 20% from level 10, with a number jump into over 40% by the time you hit level 59, and it's further increased by up to 80% by the time you reach level 70. However, these XP buffs don't stop there, as War Within is going to reward players with additional experience gains for all of your ults for every max level 80 character that is on your account. As part of the Warband account-wide everything feature, each max level 80 character is going to act like a mentor of sorts for all of your ults, allowing you to gain 5% additional experience with every level 80 on your account, stacking up to 5 times meaning that with every future all that you level is going to get easier and easier, which is a great bonus for anybody that's like me who always has a small army of alts ready during the first few weeks of an expansion. And if you're not a big fan of the Drag Theory Evokers added back in Dragonflight, you may want to save them as last to level, because recently they got some pretty big news during the alpha preview. The Drakthir by very nature are evokers, channeling powers of the aspects through them, wielding it to devastate their foes, preserve their allies, while augmenting the power and skills of their closest friends. But what if Drakthir were capable of so much more going forward? In a recent interview, it was confirmed by Ian Hazakostas that the Drakthir race will be getting access to more classes at some point in the future, after the release of The War Within. For now, the exact due date as to when this will be happening is still unknown, but plans have already been set in motion to guarantee them more playable options going forward. With this in mind, we still don't really know what classes they may be able to wield in the future, but it's not hard to imagine how their magic affinity could somehow translate into them channeling the magic of the elements, allowing them to be mages or maybe even shamans or potentially as melee classes, as there is no reason why their sharp claws can give them an extra advantage as a rogue or a warrior. As evokers, the Drakthir use breath attacks and magic channel from their jaws to strike at their targets, but this will become less of a necessary feature as a mage or a warrior, as it's been confirmed that future Drakthir that are not evokers will be able to retain their visage form if they choose a different path than that of an evoker which is a much needed quality of life change greatly requested by the community all throughout Dragonflight. 
With the War Within expansion going into alpha testing, as of this week, more and more stuff from the expansion has been recently data mined. And recently, players noticed that out of all the data mine content, a new denizen of the Kaz Algar region has been able to gain more time in the spotlight. Though this time, we are not talking about the recent allied race reveal of the Earthen Dwarves. A new race called the Haronir has been grabbing everyone's attention, mostly due to their numerous customization options. While we as players are yet to meet these Haronir in person, as they are probably set to show up at a later time towards the higher level zones of War Within, we have been able to data mine them in great detail to at least get more information regarding their appearances. And what players were able to discover is that they have a lot of customization options. In appearance, the Haronir are kind of a mix between a troll and a night elf hybrid, or something in between. With lots of unique hair options, eye options, ear options, skin options, even tusks, and other decorations to pick from. It is very possible that the War Within may end up featuring them as a potential allied race going forward. Though while no official confirmation has been given, for now this is just a speculation based on our experience with previous expansions. You see, back in Legion, players noticed that the Nightborn, the elven people of the city of Suramar, had a distinct amount of customization options available to them. And at the time, that number of options was uncommon for simple guards, vendors, traders, and innkeepers, but at the end of Legion, the Nightborn quickly became a playable option, since their entire model piggybacks off of the Night Elf skeleton, making it much easier to implement. Then we saw the same pattern way back in Battle for Azeroth when players first visited Voldoon and encountered the furry Vulpera, which eventually joined the Horde as an allied race. Just like the Nightborn, they also had a surprising amount of customization options available to them, while also borrowing from the skeleton of the Goblin model, which also made it much easier to implement as a playable variation. And that same variety of options can be seen with the same Heronir as they essentially take the Night Elf female and the male models as their base skeleton. Another clue that might suggest the inclusion of allied races throughout the War Within's lifetime would be the expansion of Battle for Azeroth, which initially launched with the Dark Iron Dwarves and the Magha Oryx. A couple of updates later, we got the Kul'Tiran humans and the Zandalari trolls, which were brought on board. And then in an update after that, we got the Mechanomes for the Alliance and the Volpera for the Horde. And it's technically possible for the War Within to follow the same footsteps as time goes on and add more allied races with future updates. Allied races in general are not really a common expansion feature and were only done towards the end of Legion as well as throughout Battle for Azeroth. And every time we got allied races, we always got them in bulk, whether it was the four viable options from the end of Legion to continuous additions all throughout BFA. So what are the chances that we may see similar trend with this expansion? As they could implement the Earthen Dwarves, which will be available for both Alliance and Horde, and then potentially add additional allied races as we make more friends within the Kaz Algar region. Like I mentioned earlier, nothing has been officially confirmed by the devs just yet, but also at the beginning of the Dragonflight expansion, they never said the Evokers were going to get a third spec either. And lo and behold, a couple of patches later, they dropped an entirely new playstyle for the class of Evoker that is completely different from anything we've seen so far in the game. And Resident Blizzard has been pretty big on keeping things a secret and then revealing it at the last second. From the Evoker exclusive legendary during Season 2, to the Evoker playstyle of Augmentation, to the legendary of Fairlath of the Emergisal Raid, as well as the entirety of the Plunderstorm event. I guess what I'm saying is it's not out of the realm of possibility for Blizzard to keep certain items secret to then surprise the players later with an update at some point in the future. Let me know what are your thoughts about the Heronir though as a potential, possible, race option in the comments down below. Would you play one if these guys were made available for both the Alliance and the Horde or are they not your preference and what would you like to see change for the Heronir going forward if they were to become like a viable playable option? But otherwise, that's going to cover all of the newest updates that I've missed with my recent alpha preview video. I want to thank all of you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed. Best of luck to everybody trying to make their way into the War Within Alpha. If we end up being one of the lucky few to get in, you'll likely be seeing a live stream on this channel, probably on the same day that you watch this video, just a couple of hours later. So be sure to check back in to see if a live stream is going to be up or not. 
as per usual if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative go ahead and give it a thumbs up i would very much appreciate it and as always in the description of every single video and live stream we have a link to our discord community channel probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes join our discord to become part of the community but otherwise thank you all so much for watching this video i do hope you guys enjoyed let me know all of your thoughts down below and as always i'll see all of you guys in another video